All right. Who who are you? Great. So my name is Mike Henley. So I'm the manager of the Global Developer Experience team here in uh, Developer Division. We work with the teams here in Redmond to try to make sure the products are world ready and work in other cultures. And I also have people on my team who are around the world who are working with customers trying to really make sure that we get their feedback and we're, we're meeting the needs of customers. Speaking everywhere. of uh, around the world, you got a lot of cool maps in your office here. Yeah, I'm a little, a little bit of a map buff. So I have a, a map behind me of China. I used to live in China for almost two years working for Visual Studio, so that was a good experience. Cool. I have some other maps, I guess, of Vietnam, Cambodia, the world map. I've got some Tibetan prayer flags up top, so just kind of customizing the office a little bit to make it feel more at home. So. And what are we talking about today? Well, today I want to talk to you about something I think is an exciting project for my team called the Visual Studio Learning Pack. And the Learning Pack is an application we created, um, first we created in China actually, so that's another good segue to China. A lot of the credit goes to program manager on my team in China, his name is Chang Tan, who came up with this idea. So basically, he saw a need to work more closely with middle school students in China to learn programming. And they had a specific requirements about taking classes, I don't, I don't know how many hours of class on computer science, etc. So he came up with these tools last year, we called it the Middle School Power Toy, you can still find that on the download site. And that was a program that he created to help students learn and help teachers to teach about programming. And so he's working with a program called the Partner in Learning in China to help roll that out to schools across China. And so this year we made version 2.0, added some new features and... Gave it a new name. Made, we gave it a new name. <laughs> we thought that the Middle School Power Toy was it really sounded like it should only be used for middle school students. So we really didn't want that. We want it to be for anybody who's new to programming. And we've had about 15,000 download attempts so far. So it's over the last couple of months. So it's getting, it's getting some use. We started in China. Uh, as I said, the first version was in Chinese. And then we localized it to English, which is sort of unusual for Microsoft. We usually do it the other way around. So, and the same thing happened last year and this year. We started first in Chinese. Now we have English. Soon we'll have Spanish and a few other languages coming out. And we've had some good responses from Latin America, from people in Canada, people of course in the U.S. and China as well. So a lot of people either inside of Microsoft and outside of Microsoft are taking a look at it. It's just a free download that they can use with their students and we hope that it'll help get them excited about programming. And you're saying use with their students, so you, you envision mostly it's, it's teachers downloading this and using it with students or students directly getting it themselves? Well, I think it's both and we'll take a look at it, but I think it's, it's two parts. There are some of the tools that would be very good for teaching the concepts, teaching the algorithms, how does a sort work, how does a search work. You could display it on the screen in front of the class. So I think some of the pro components could be used by the teacher. And then some of the other components help you to declare variables and to declare classes and make flow charts off your code. Those things could be used more by the students to do their homework, turn in their flow chart that they need to create, or to just help them to, to not get hung up on syntax. Sometimes declaring variables can get a little bit complicated in C Sharp or, or VB. And rather than getting worried about a semicolon or a curly brace, you know, when we really want them to know the concept to make progress, I think these wizards will kind of let them create the variables more quickly and not get hung up on the, the minor details. So that's, that's what it's all about. Cool. Yeah. Okay, great. I want to give you a little demonstration about what the BSLP is all about. Cool. And I'll show you Visual Studio. I think that's the easiest, to, easiest way to see the components and to really see how they work and what they're all about. So the first thing I want to demonstrate, there are two controls that we include that you can use on WinForm applications. And of course, you can use all these things in VB or in C Sharp. The one exception is that the class designer is for C Sharp only at this point. So if you were to install the product, it's like a four megabyte free download from the download center at MSDN. You'll see that on the toolbar, you have a new control called Sort Designer and another control called Sort Search Control. Mm -hmm. And so what I've done is I've placed these on a form, as you can see. And I'll actually go through and run those so you can watch what's happening. But first, before I do that, I want to show if I click on the sort control, if you look over here in the properties in your project for the control, of course, you can see the name that I gave it. And then you can also set some other things, such as the interval, which is how quickly it steps through the sort. Mm -hmm. You can set the colors that it's using. You can set the uh, sort method to be insertion or bubble sort. And you can also say it's a descending or a descending sort order. But you, you were saying earlier this is meant for just true early beginners. And when I look at this, I, I wonder, you know, how do they get into this and know what's going on? Is there some sort of instructions, or are you just showing me what it can do? Right, well, we do provide some instructions with it. I think 
I'm showing you what it can do. Um, you can just put it on your form by default and leave right. it all alone, basically. Yeah. And what I would expect to happen is a teacher would probably show this to them in the class and maybe not get into the properties, but actually just say, hey, I'm doing a, an insertion right. sort. Look at what is happening. Look at how the sort is happening. So the main, the main idea here is to kind of visually watch the sort happen and watch the searching happen. And you're right, I don't want to get too confused with the, the properties. I think sure. that a beginner probably wouldn't look at that. These, these are the two controls that probably a teacher would demonstrate on the big screen and mm -hmm. maybe not actually have the students use them. Right. It's, it's not really a functional control like a tree control or a label control. It's not something you would really use in a real application. It's really just a visual aid. So if I go ahead and run the application, um, I will pop up on my screen the dialog, the form. And I'm going to minimize uh, my large window so that we're not uh, confusing things. Okay. So if you look at this form, you'll see that there's the sort control and the search control included. And by default, I'm using insertion sort and binary search mm -hmm. for the two controls. So if I hit start on the sort control, you'll see that it gives me a bunch of data that's not sorted. So it gives me some sample data. And what I want to do is kind of step through it. So if I click next, you'll see it's gradually moving them into the sorted column. And because I'm using insertion sort, it's going to insert the, the new number in the correct location. So it's going to go through the list, find the correct place to put it, and then insert it between the previous and the following number. Cool. So in this case, if I hit next again, you'll see that it just took the number 92. Of course, it moved it all the way to the top because that's the, the smallest number. Mm -hmm. the next number looks like it's a 10. Of course, that should bubble up to the top again, and it did. The next number is 133. So we would expect that to fall in place between 863 and 92 because that's the next logical um, place for it to be. And as you can see, as you step through, it keeps you step going, through, yeah. and you can control the speed and the properties of how fast this goes. So you can keep stepping through it um, until you get to the end. You can also hit go to end, and it will do all the searching and all the sorting and replace the numbers for you. And then what you can also do is take a look at the code. So if you go to the code tab and generate code. You'll actually see, I'm in C Sharp, so I have a C Sharp code that represents this sort. Oh, that's very cool. I like that. Yeah, and so it has some comments that can help you. And this helps you to understand what the code would look like behind that behavior. But you can also copy and paste this somewhere into your file, your code file. And if you really want to get into it, you could set code point, break points, and you could step through line by line. So that would be another way to see it happening mm -hmm. um, as you go. So that's, that's basically what the sort control is about, and again, you could also do bubble sort, and you can see how the, the numbers are being moved as you do a bubble sort. Now, the second control, which is similar, is all about searching. So here we have um, the binary search is the, is the version that I'm using. Mm -hmm. If I hit start here, again, I get a bunch of data, and if you remember how the binary search works, it's kind of looking, splitting it in half each time and looking yeah. and narrowing down your search. And so the data is actually already sorted in ascending order that we put in here. Now it's asking you to put in a number that you want to search for. So if I put in the number 352, which of course is not in my list of numbers, I would not expect it to be found. So I put in a number 352, I hit next, it's dividing uh, the data in half, sorting, or searching, and then it, it already realized that it got the 351 and found out there was no 352. Right. So it basically says, okay, it wasn't found. So I should do another example. So if I start it again, this time I'm going to search for 411, which is in uh, is in my list. So I can step through this, and after only two steps, it found it and it said found it index equals one. So it means it's in the second position of the list. Right. Is 411. So that's kind of showing how a binary search is working. You could also do um, sequential searching as well. And the same as with the sort control, if I come to the code window, I can say generate code, and it generates C sharp code even including the same values that were used um, that I was searching for, 411, and the list of values that we're searching. And again, I could copy that code, I could paste it into my program and, and yeah. step through it if I wanted to. That's cool. Yeah. So again, really a visual thing. You probably would never put this on a real application. It's just something maybe a teacher would use with their students. So let me go back and jump back over to my project. So now I want to move from these visual controls that we include to the three other features that we have, which are, they could also be used for teaching, but I think they're also helping the student to work more effectively when they're new. Sure. So, for example, the first one I want to talk about is called the Visual Declarative Designer. So this is a way that you can declare variables 
sort of through a dialogue. Instead of typing the code directly into the file, you just get them kind of visually and graphically. Okay. And so 